Hey everybody, what's up? Wes Murgart here with WorkRemotelyLiveRemotely.com and today we'll be taking you through some of my top things to do in Sedona, Arizona. Okay, so first off, the most important thing to know about Sedona is that it is an outdoor paradise. If you don't like hiking, mountain biking, the great outdoors, going off-roading, then you are in the wrong place. Okay, so the best way to experience Sedona is on foot. So grab your hiking boots and let's dig into my top 15 things to do in Sedona, Arizona. Okay guys, so if you're looking for a hike to make you feel like you're on top of the world, then Devil's Bridge is right up your alley. It is hands down the best hike in Sedona. In my opinion, this is the number one hike in Sedona. If you can secure a parking space at the Dry Creek Vista Trailhead, the length is a relatively short 3.6 miles. Be warned, however, as parking for this trailhead and many others in Sedona can be a debacle. So in order to beat the crowds and secure parking, you'll want to arrive as early as possible. On a rainy Tuesday morning, we were one of the last cars in the lot at 7.45 a.m. On a nicer weekend, you may need to arrive earlier than that. The views from atop the Red Rock Arch are stunning. And if you arrive later in the day, there will be crowds which are going to make your photo op a little bit more difficult. Okay, so for our next stop, we're going to be taking in views of Sedona from above at the airport Mesa. There are really three points of interest in this area. On your way up the hill, you'll see a parking lot for the airport loop trail. It's a 3.2 mile long trail, which also gives you access to the energy vortex located in this area. More on those in a bit. Parking for this trailhead can be very crowded. If you continue up the hill a little further, you'll find a much larger parking area that provides access to the Airport Mesa Grill restaurant and viewing area. Now, I've heard great things about the restaurant located here, but unfortunately, it was too busy and we weren't able to fit it into our schedule during our stay. If the restaurant isn't an option, the Airport Mesa still offers spectacular views of Sedona and is well worth a stop. Okay, so if you're looking for more epic hikes to do in Sedona, located about halfway between Flagstaff and Sedona is the West Fork of Oak Creek Trail. My favorite thing about this trail is that it's welcoming the hikers of all ability levels. Even though the full out and back distance is pegged at 6.6 .6 miles, the scenery doesn't change too meaningfully once you're about a mile in. This means that you can basically pick a distance that fits your schedule and ability level without feeling like you're missing out on the trail's highlight, which is usually located at the end. The scenery here differs from much of Sedona as it follows a flowing creek and offers substantial shade from the dense tree line. If you're coming to Sedona to do some hiking, this is a must hit trail. Okay guys, so after you hike West Fork, you're going to want to continue another 10 minutes north. You're going to come across the Oak Creek Vista. After ascending several hairpin turns, you'll see signs for a pull off and viewing area. Not only can you enjoy spectacular views of the Oak Creek Valley below, but there are typically Native American vendors set up here selling crafts. This probably makes this the best stop in Sedona for souvenir shopping as well. There's a short nature walk that offers up a few different views of the surrounding area. And if you aren't hiking West Fork, this still makes for an easy stop on the way up to Flagstaff or on your way to the Grand Canyon. Okay guys, our next must see activity when visiting Sedona is the Soldier Pass hike. This hike is unique because it offers up four different points of interest along the way. If you're interested in seeing the seven sacred pools, Devil's Kitchen, the Soldier Pass Secret Cave, or Vista Views at the trail's endpoint, you're in the right place. This trail will cost you five to seven miles of hiking depending on whether you hike out to the Vista, Secret Cave, or both. To reach the Soldier Pass Cave, look for a tree with a National Forest Wilderness sign crudely fastened to it. This is gonna mark where you need to turn off the traditional trail to head up towards the cave. Although it's not officially marked, this trail is pretty worn in and easy to traverse. Keep in mind this cave is an Instagram favorite, so it really isn't a secret and it's likely going to be crowded. Parking at the Soldier Pass Trailhead is brutally limited as well, so you'll need to arrive before the gates open up at 8 a.m. and wait in your car outside the lot in order to have a chance at securing a parking space. Okay guys, for our next activity, we're gonna take a break from hiking and we're gonna visit the Talaki Paki Arts and Crafts Village to do some shopping and dining. Keep in mind, a lot of the specialty shops and art galleries here can be pricey, so be prepared to shell out some serious coin if you plan on leaving with anything. Otherwise, you can enjoy a very budget-friendly stroll through the area, taking in the fountains, street music, and sculptures that are scattered around this part of town. Okay, so another great place to take a break from hiking is the Crescent Moon Ranch and Picnic Area. This is a slightly less popularized area of Sedona where you can enjoy open green spaces, nature walks, stunning views of the Cathedral Rock, and even go for a swim in Oak Creek. If you're in town with a family, this is a great place to pack up a lunch and have a picnic in the afternoon. 
It's also a pay to park destination, so a day pass is gonna run you 11 bucks. If you're visiting on a warm day, don't forget to pack your swimsuit as this is one of the best places to access Oak Creek to go swimming. Okay guys, with our eighth must-see activity when visiting Sedona, we're gonna pivot back to hiking. We're gonna hit the Boynton Canyon and Vista Trails. Full disclosure, while I've been to this area twice, both times we were too short on time to hike out to the Subway Cave, which can be accessed from this trailhead. Instead, we stopped to take in the views at Boynton Canyon Vista, where the energy vortex is said to be. So while I haven't actually seen the cave, even though it does look really cool, according to Instagram, I can really only speak for the surrounding area, which is absolutely spectacular. My two visits were about 18 months apart. Each time we stumbled across this particular older gentleman who frequents the area. On our first visit, he was walking the trail, handing out small heart-shaped rocks and wishing people well. The second time, he was perched atop a rather difficult to climb rock at the Boynton Canyon Vista playing a flute. He eventually climbed down, and what do you know, he gave us another set of heart-shaped rocks. I hope you're lucky enough to run into him as well. For me, that experience really epitomizes why Sedona is said to have such a spiritual draw for some. Okay guys, next up on our list we have Bell Rock, which is home to another one of Sedona's famous vortices. Bell Rock is located roughly halfway between Sedona and the village of Oak Creek. Parking here isn't great, which for the record, parking is pretty much a disaster everywhere in Sedona. But uh, when it comes to Bell Rock, if you're patient, you should be able to secure a spot, even if that means circling a lot a couple times. The official Bell Rock Trail is a short one mile out and back, which leads you up to the base of the rock formation shown here. If you're feeling adventurous, you can scramble up further. Some people were quite high. Uh, even though you aren't that high from the base, the views of the surrounding red rocks are stunning. The area is fairly open, so don't be surprised to see tour groups, yoga classes, or wedding ceremonies utilizing this space. Okay guys, speaking of all these energy vortices, that's our number 10 activity when visiting Sedona, and it's to just get out and visit all four of the major vortices in the area. There are four primary locations that are said to have special energies and spiritual significance to the natives who once inhabited these lands. The first three we've already covered, which are Boynton Canyon, the Airport Mesa, and Bell Rock. That leaves us with Cathedral Rock as the fourth and final energy vortex location. Cathedral Rock is one of the most popular hikes in Sedona, which also provides you with access to the vortex itself. We had planned to hike it for sunset on our last day in Sedona, but we literally could not get a parking spot in the area surrounding the trailhead, so instead we ended up visiting Bell Rock. If you plan on hiking Cathedral Rock, it might be worth prioritizing this one and arriving early to beat the crowds. If you do run into parking issues, Bell Rock serves as a nice backup given its close proximity to Cathedral Rock. Okay, so my next must-see activity to do when visiting Sedona isn't actually in Sedona. It's to take about a 45-minute drive north and visit Flagstaff. Flagstaff has an amazing craft beer and food scene. Also, here's a pro tip. If you're having trouble finding accommodations in Sedona within your budget, consider staying in Flagstaff. You'll have more options at better prices, and the drive between towns is very manageable and scenic. It also serves as a slightly better jumping off point for visiting the Grand Canyon or Petrified Forest National Park than Sedona. Okay, so speaking of Flagstaff, this is a perfect segue to our next must-see activity, which is to actually take a trip a little bit further north and continue on to visit the Grand Canyon. It's about a 90-minute drive from Flagstaff where you're looking about two hours from Sedona. The Grand Canyon is one of the U.S.'s most isolated national parks, which means you should take advantage of your proximity when visiting Sedona and make a day trip or more up to the South Rim. Consider the scenery of Sedona as a warm-up to what the Grand Canyon has to offer. Videos and photographs just don't do the Grand Canyon justice. You have to see it for yourself to take in the scale and beauty. Make sure to check out the popular Mare Point, Grand Canyon Village, and if you aren't scared of heights, venture down one of the trailheads that follow the canyon's walls. These trails don't have railings, so they aren't for the faint of heart, but if you can stomach them, it's the best way to experience what the Grand Canyon has to offer. Okay, for our next must-see activity in the 13th spot, we have the Amitabha Stupa and Peace Park. Considering Sedona is somewhat of a spiritual mecca, no list of must-see places would be complete without a shout out to the Amitabha Stupa and Peace Park. We didn't have any issues securing parking here, and the actual stupa and park area is just a short walk from the parking lot. Be mindful that the area is entirely outdoors and there are limited bathroom facilities. As much as I personally enjoyed visiting the stupa, this activity probably isn't in everyone's wheelhouse, so be mindful of that when you're planning your trip. 
Okay, so if you still haven't found your spiritual cup of tea when visiting Sedona, maybe the Chapel of the Holy Cross will speak to you. Completed in 1957, the chapel is one of Sedona's most recognizable landmarks. Much like the Amitabha Stupa, the chapel isn't a destination meant for everyone. If you're visiting Sedona for spiritual reasons, photography, or just want to feel like you've thoroughly explored the Sedona area, then this stop is up your alley. The chapel isn't going to fall into the same conversation as a Notre Dame or Sagrada Familia in terms of curb appeal, but it is unique and interesting in its own right. The church interior is open to the public, so feel free to pop your head inside and pay your respects. Okay, for our 15th and final must-see activity when visiting Sedona, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you budget some time to go out and make your own adventure. I know it sounds cheesy, I know it's not actually an activity, but hear me out. Our first visit to Sedona was a completely spontaneous day trip following a conference I was attending in Scottsdale for work. We didn't really have a plan and instead just asked around for suggestions of what to do. We ended up visiting West Fork and Boynton Canyon on that trip, and we fell in love with Sedona's charm enough that we knew we'd be back. Okay everyone, that's it. Those are my top 15 things to do when visiting Sedona. Once again, I'm Wes Murgard with WorkRemotelyLiveRemotely.com. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out the link in the description. We have a web version of this travel guide posted to our website to help you plan your trip to Sedona. Be sure to check out some of our other travel guide content as well. And thanks again for watching.